Hey, how's it going? John Ellison here from Refi Dow. I wanted to release the first episode of a new series that I'm calling Welcome to Refi, where I share little snippets of conversations from amazing people that I'm meeting across this movement at the intersection of climate action and Web3. Today, I had the great pleasure of getting to know Marcelo Silva, the community manager at Refi Spring. Refi Spring is a distributed network of events that are encouraging people to have meaningful conversations about this movement in Refi. Marcelo is a PhD in institutional analysis. He grew up in one of the most violent cities in Brazil and has witnessed firsthand the environmental destruction that's happening in that country and also the effects that organizations and the design of the incentives that they provide shapes on society as a whole. Marcelo is one of the most brilliant people that I've had the pleasure of meeting recently, and I just wanted to share a bit of his story, a bit of his background, so that other people can see who is in this space, see that people like them are making a difference, and that there's loads of room for people just like you. Hope you enjoy this one and stay tuned for the next one. Thanks. Hey, what's going on, Marcel? Good morning, how are you? Good morning, I'm good. It's a nice weather here in Brazil because it was hot, hot, like too, too hot for like two <laughs> weeks and now we got a little rain to, to yesterday. It's nice. What about you? Gorgeous, man. Yeah, it's absolutely beautiful here. I'm in England today um, after a few months in Portugal. The sun is shining, the kids are running around with the neighbors, and uh, everybody's in a good mood. So, oh, yeah, that's man. Nice. But hey, thanks for carving time out. I know we've been hanging out in the Refi Spring community and Refi DAO, and I've heard really good things about you. I've obviously oh, looked at thanks. your Giveth project and Gitcoin stuff, the Refi in the Classroom, uh, and just wanted to spend some time getting to know you, man. So, yeah, I would love to just step back and hear your story, like where have you come from? And then maybe share a little bit about what you're excited about contributing to this community and what you're getting into. Oh, so my history. Um, I was born in Serra. Serra is the city where the project is going on right now. Um, Serra was the most violent city in the whole country back in 2005, 2006, I think. Um, more people were, were being killed in Serra than in Iraq, during the war of Iraq. So it was a violent city. But at the time, I did not realize, because I was a child, so I did not realize uh, how violent it is. You just leave, you know. And then I, I went to university here in Vitoria, where I live now. And it's the neighbor city, like, just like... Uh, one kilometer away, it's not that far. And, and then I realized, oh, <laughs> life is not like that. We got, we can live better. And I, I have a degree in philosophy, a master's degree in, in theory of justice, and a PhD in institutional analysis. Uh, and and that's when I came to realize about uh, how important it is to build institutions, like to, mm. to retain the value they reproduce as a generation and to keep uh, the reform, the good things that we do as a generation. Because um, I don't know how it's in Europe, but in Latin America, we got a, we got a, a problem that is a good government come and then do nice things to people, and then another one come, a uh, bad government, and undo the whole thing. So if you if you don't have if you, we don't have like nice institutions to keep the value produced, uh, all the things will be just will be just like going up and down, up and down. And uh, I've been in crypto and blockchain for like. Uh, three years going to the fourth now. Um, I, I was, uh, as as the, as most people, I started well with investments <laughs> like with Bitcoin, Ethereum, and then I moved to DeFi. And then I was like, hey, we can build like institutions with DeFi. <laughs> and it was like uh, amazing by uh, how much we can do with so little, with so a tiny thing. Like uh, you, we can literally built institutions with our cell phones and 
it's pretty important to Brazil because here in Brazil, uh, a lot of people don't have computers in their house, but we got like uh, everyone has a cell phone. And that's why uh, Silo is so important here, the, the job they, they were doing. And, and I was like amazing by uh, what we can do with the FI and study it and invest in it also. And then I just, I was listening to the, the Blockchain Socialist podcast and I, I, I can't pronounce the name of the guy, the writer, the Greek one. Papa G. Mitropoulos. <laughs> and, <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> that sounds like a good take for me. <laughs> yeah, yes, Papa G. Mitropoulos. And, and I was listening to the episode where, where when he was interviewed, and I was like, and I was like, hey, that sounds nice, Crypto Commons. It's nice. And I just emailed him, and he answered the, the email in like two minutes saying about 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 crypto commons about uh, about this whole new reality to me because I did not realize I, I, at the time I did not know that people were actually building things to solve social issues issues with with defy with blockchain and then once at crypto commons I met um, I think it was hero or Cool. I think it was here who talked to me the first thing, the first, the, the first time about refi. And then I started to look in Portuguese for some material about refi to understand better what it, what it means. And I realized that there was nothing at the time about refi in Portuguese, like nothing at all, at least in Brazilian, in Brazilian sites, nothing. And I just write, I just wrote two papers <laughs> on refi. I, I, I searched in English, I, I wrote two papers, I think it was, it was the first two papers wrote in Brazil about refi, and the people from the platform, it was uh, Prensa, Prensa.ly platform, they were amazing about, amazed by, uh, by the, the matter of refi, and they were like, hey, bring something more, <laughs> write more, and then I continued to write. And about the project, about the blockchain in the classroom, uh, at first the, the goal of the project was to build an audience for the Refi Spring event here in Brazil. Because uh, I was like afraid of we do not have an audience, like a big one. And then I was like, hey, I can go to a school, teach, teach the teenagers about, about DeFi, about blockchain and they will like it, and I, I can teach about refi, and then do an event about it. And the project was really going well, and then I went to Ethereum Hill, and I met a lot of people like really into refi here in Brazil. <laughs> like uh, Fausto Vanin from One Person. Uh, it was the, it's a startup that helped with the mass uh, tokenization of Amazon Forest Acres. Uh, I think you know about what I'm talking about. Moss, the company. Yeah, so I know Moss Fausto, quite well. Fausto, yeah, Fausto was the guy behind the tech, the, the tech to oh, nice. tokenize the acres. And I met a lot of people and most of them were on board to do a refi spring event here. Like not a small one was a was well as I'm thinking, as I was, as I was speaking at the beginning, but uh, a medium or a large one, only about refi. Because I think uh, yesterday uh, I told you about um, how big an issue is the environment and the climate change here in Brazil. Um, for example, and, uh, and Vale do Rio Doce, the company, and uh, they destroyed a river that was the main source of income for more than 50 cities in Brazil. And um, like just destroyed the river because one of the mining stations, I don't know, I don't know the technical name of the place, uh, just mm. exploded and all the, all the trash and all the chemicals go straight for the river. And it was in Minas Gerais, and the trash came all over to the ocean, here where I live, in Vitoria. 
And even here in Vitoria, the the power plant of Vale do Rio Doce is bigger. It's not bigger, but it's almost the same size as the whole city. And it's in the urban area. So we have like a lot of issues with uh, the climate change, with uh, uh, the production of food, vegetables here in Brazil. And that's why I was so amazing about refi and I am not a was, but I am so amazing about refi and about what you can do. Because to me, refi is not only about uh, preserving and regenerating. Because we already had like the green capitalism and a lot of initiatives. But refi is most about giving uh, to the people who are already doing it, the tools to continue and to do it with freedom, with liberty. Like we will not uh, be buying initiatives. We, we cannot buy an initiative with refi. Refi is aimed at, at least to me, is aimed at giving the tools. Hey, hey, you are already doing something here, the tools. And the tools are, are not like just uh, money, but most about uh, uh, governance structures, like uh, uh, connections, because once you think, once you, you, you start to realize that you are connected with a global initiative, you, you feel more empowered to do things. Um, and the project at first was I meant at build an audience for the, for the event here. But then I went to an Ethereum Hill and I was like, hey, I do not need the project to be I meant at it specifically. I can do a project of onboarding uh, the teenagers to Web3 and build an event aside with, with a lot of people that I met there. And then the project was alive for, it, for its own. Um, we, have, we had a grant for Harmony. Um, uh, I think what it was 9K. And it's a, it was really nice because I could bring two more people to the project and build a website and start to, uh, doing some partnerships with some platforms to really do the course. Like we can, right now we have six online course, uh, only card, the format of cards about its onboarding course, like how to set up a MetaMask, uh, the, the basic elements of a blockchain, what is the hash function, uh, consensus algorithm. So, um, I think this is it. The project is, is, is going really nice right now and I'm pretty excited about how this is going and uh, I think I, uh, I also told you yes, yesterday at the meeting that I'm now working with people from Bankless Brazil and I will contribute, contribute with some content about refi and about education because I was searching for the material about refi and there was nothing in Portuguese at least <laughs> and we've been doing that. So enough with me. How how are nice. you going? How is it going? Yeah, man, that's super cool. I, I love it. Um, happy to shift gears in in a bit and share some of my perspective on my journey as well. Um, you mentioned yesterday that you were also part of uh, Black Leaders DAO. Is that right? I don't know much about that organization. Yes. Like, what is it? How did you get involved? So um, uh, I went to Ethereum Hill, and it was a pretty white event. And it was like old because uh, Rio de Janeiro, uh, more than half of the population is black. But the event was like, it seems like Europe. <laughs> but we got like, I think what it was, uh, uh, I don't know, maybe 50, maybe 17 black people, like all over the event. And at least I think 10, of those were scholars from Blue Dao, a Dao from Harmony. And we just like, hey, we are the only black people here. Um, and it's not, it's not a mystery <laughs> why we, are the, we were the only black people because it's really hard to onboard people about, uh, with uh, tech in general. Not only black people, but people from all uh, ethnicities which were like oppressed or poor people in general also. It's really hard, at least in Latin America, because with the poverty here, uh, 
uh, came to get, come together, the lack of education and the lack of opportunities. So uh, it's not a mystery why we were the only black people there. And we, we realized, hey, we should do something. And we realized that we were like pretty diverse between us. Like I'm from Brazil and there were Daphne, he, she was uh, from New York, a senior uh, de uh, developer, uh, a software engineer, senior. And Sunny, Sunny is from Kenya, I think. She managed the Vegan Africa Fund, who supports like small producers of food around, around Africa. And uh, Marcia Silva, Marcia is an amazing woman here in Brazil who built an initiative called Museu de Favela, the Favela Museum, to record and store the, the narratives of people from favelas about the world and about the favelas. And it's, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a wonderful job. Like, uh, you really you cry if you listen to the narratives. Uh, for example, one of, one of her productions at the museum was a series of interviews with some mothers who raised, who raised their children in favelas. And it was from like, hey, I have, I have three children in a favela and they are, they are going pretty, pretty well right now. They study and they have jobs. To I have five, five, uh, five ch uh, children in favela killed by the police. So it goes all the way. And it's, um, her job is really nice. And so we met a lot of people, like, for example, Aline, Aline Silva, she was, she's a, 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 an athlete, Olympic athlete from Brazil. Um, I think she won a gold medal in Tokyo Olympic. So, and she has also a project about teaching uh, small children how to wrestle and how to speak English because English is it's a barrier here in Brazil. Um, and also Spanish is a barrier, is a barrier here <laughs> because we are sure. like doing our own thing in Latin America. We don't, we don't speak yeah. the language that the rest of the continent speaks. <laughs> and mm. we also don't speak English. So <laughs> we are just here. Um, and her project is really nice because he, he, she can like connect the, the girls to some opportunities uh, abroad. And well, it was a lot of people <laughs> with really nice projects. And then we managed to like reunite the projects around uh, a single purpose of trying mm -hmm. to help the black leadership around the globe who struggle to build projects like uh, the one we have. Mm -hmm. Because it's really, it's really hard for a person, for example, here in Brazil, uh, within a favela or a poor community in general, to ask for money to do something nice for the community because the, hmm. the big corporations already have the, the projects and the small business cannot afford to give money. So hmm. usually the people who are trying to help the community here in Brazil are like alone doing things hmm. from uh, their own pocket. So yeah. that's what Black Leaders is about, to help those people about uh, especially black leadership to build projects uh, and we, we do that by trying to connect with fund opportunities, with uh, educational opportunities, job opportunities and right now we are building an ecosystem of professionals who will help each black leadership um, in each part of the globe with specific uh, demands and requirements for their own activities. I think this is it. <laughs> I speak Man, a lot. sounds like, awesome. Sorry. No, this is it. This is exactly what I was hoping to get into. It's just trying to understand the space because this is like a totally different universe for me. You know, I, I feel as though the internet is great at making connections, but you often end up finding yourself in a corner of the web. So uh, disconnected to lots of other pieces of the puzzle. And so I think 
part of the reason I wanted to chat was just to see what you're up to. Uh, love how far and wide you've spread yourself. Had no idea you had a master's and a PhD, like super sick background. Um, and yeah, man, excited to see what happens at Refi Spring in Brazil and how this Refi in the Classroom project goes through. Um, I just want to encourage, yeah, anybody who's listening, check out your Twitter profile uh, at MarceauAlt5. And yeah, man, you've got links to Black Leaders DAO, um, a couple other projects that you're working on here, uh, Blockchain in the Classrooms, and then Bankless Brazil um, for anyone who's <laughs> interested. Um, so yeah, man, lots of stuff going on and uh, it's just grateful to have some chance to connect today. So thanks for sharing a bit of your story, man. And um, yeah, it's been really fun. Thank you.